you, last year's show is kind of like a landmark event for them. And I still consider it. I even told Tony on air, this is my favorite live wrestling show I've ever been to. It was, and, it was fantastic, without a doubt. And then this year is a landmark event for a completely different reason. They, like the entire pay-per-view has been overshadowed. Completely. The MJF return was completely overshadowed, and that was supposed to be the big thing. And they and I give them credit for, you know, I thought, like, again, there was a lot of talk, and we talked about, like, MJF maybe being the Joker. And I thought, oh, that's so flat. But they put it together in a way where actually the way it was scripted and the way it turned out, I actually thought it was really good and clever. Um, and I, I wasn't a fan of, um, you know, all those guys running in and Stokely getting the chip and handing it to him. Um, and those guys have to be just hitmen, right? Because they're not aligned. So they're like hired guns, I guess. That's the gimmick for them. Yeah. So it's like I thought like I, I could see why they did it that way. But it also and it isn't that they turned a great match into crap, although that did happen. I mean, you know, a, lot, guys... a lot of people did not like the finish when it happened. It, especially oh, 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 in the build in the building. I don't yeah. think anyone liked it. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. But th the idea was you probably wouldn't like it. But by the end of the show, it's like you could see MJF and that's much bigger than the fact you had, you know, one match with a bad finish. I yeah. mean, I'm sure that's the mentality. And that was fine. It would have, you know, um, you know, if everything else hadn't happened, him being back would have been the big talking point of the show. And, and so that's not, um, you know, the way it was laid out. That was a good thing. Yeah. No, I, I enjoyed it. I was like, I, I was it was one of those things where I was like, OK, I think they're saving this for, for the end of this show. And that's going to be the moment. Maybe it's not going to be as big as last year's moment for sure. But that's going to be their signature moment at the end, you know, where you get the surprise and then it's just all overshadowed, you know, an hour and a half later. Right. OK, so when it comes to the business of this show, my theory was that because Punk hadn't wrestled between double or nothing or actually did the one the one match after and now that there would be a little bit more intrigue you know because he's gonna it's a title match again and man i was my guess was uh was way high as far as what the numbers that i've seen reported by you so far for the paper yeah, so I, I, it's a little lower than i expected um i mean the fact that there was i mean people are throwing off that that two wwe shows is like not being a factor and it, it again i don't know how big a factor it is but it's a factor it's not the only factor and it's not the difference between 100 170 and 140 let's say you know let's let's go you know 135 142 somewhere in that range mm -hmm. maybe slightly higher but i don't think it's going to get it get to 150 but i mean um it's it it may you know and i but for example that what i thought of was was when I think it was Forbidden Door when you guys were all over my house, right? Mm -hmm. And we were going to watch, we were going to watch Forbidden Door, and then we we're going to watch UFC, right? Yes. And we were, we were all. I mean, that that was the plan. We we're going to watch UFC. When Forbidden Door was over, it was like, you know, you'd had a long, we'd all had a long day, and yeah. I was the only one watching UFC. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, it's like it wasn't like the UFC. You weren't interested in UFC. It was just like, it's just you. You know what I mean? It's like it, you watched a show. We it's were like, beat. Yeah, we were beat. We were beat. It's it's like it's like. If there's three NFL games going on in a day, are yeah, and you're interested in all three, you may skip the third just because you've you're NFL'd out, um, or even two. You know what I mean? Some people only watch one game on Sunday rather than two, but um, so it's like it it's a factor. Um, is it the it wasn't head to head? Um, and, and I'm sure specifically because head to head makes it sound a lot more malicious. It's sort of smarter. You go first. Um, you know, it's WWE, the, it's, it's the house show mentality of what WWE used to do in the eighties, which would be when WCW had a pay-per-view, they would try to book the, the building the night before and run a show until one in the morning to on purpose, uh, cause WCW would run in like late afternoon was their pay-per-view window. So the idea is all those people who want to go to WCW, you get two things, you know, and you, and load up the show, of course, of course you load up the show. So, the, so a lot of people go to WWE the night before. And I book, I saw that in Phoenix and I saw that in Nashville, I Chicago went to all those markets, you know, where, where WWE did this, you know, and, and what happens is, is, you know, the crowd's a little bit tired. Some people don't, they don't have tickets, aren't going to buy late, even though they wanted to. It's kind of like, ah, I just, we just saw a five hour wrestling show, four and a half hour wrestling show last night. You know, do we need to see another one? Right. So, and, and, and then even if they do go, they're tired because they just saw this long show till, you know, 1230 AM, 1 AM. Um, usually about 12, 1235 was when they would end it, you know, which usually WWE would end at 1030, you know? So it's like, there, there's a strategy here and, you know, 
that's the strategy. So I saw this and it's like, that's the strategy. And, um, you know, that's not the only reason. I mean, at the end of the day, it's it's the the show was not as deep as some of the other shows. I was not as excited like like um, Full Gear or um, um, Revolution or, or or Double or Nothing. It's like those shows were loaded up and down. You're going like oh, there's all these four star matches type of thing. And this one, you really didn't have that. You had a, 15 matches and you and a lot of them you weren't interested in. So it wasn't you didn't have the same thing. And then the main event which in theory is your two top guys going for the championship and everything like that. It did not have, you know, for timing issues, it's nobody's fault. Punk was injured and they just, they only had a couple weeks to get the thing together and they did what they did and all that. But it was, it was not enough time when your, your biggest match, one of them is announced the Wednesday before and another one is announced the Friday before. Yeah. Um, and, and it's a lesson, you know, don't, don't do that again. Um, and but but again, they're 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 not cold by any means, but they are not as hot as they were. And some of that has to do with just not being as hot as they were. And some of that has to do with WWE doing very well and um, making it harder for AEW. Those these, these are these are all factors that are in play. And it did seem while watching Clash at the Castle that there was a, an interest to have a strong in-ring show, which is a they had a great calling card. They had a great show when it came to wrestling matches. Um, so yeah, that's you know, so you give people that great stuff. They're not necessarily ready for another. You know what I mean? It's like you just saw like the the Gunther match, and you saw the Roman Reigns match, and it's kind of like again, it's like wow, we we just saw a great show. We don't need you know, we can want to do something. We can do something else on Sunday, right? Um, it's it's. You know, I mean, there's a lot of there's just a lot of factors involved. Um, you it's, have... it's it's going to and it's going to be more. You know, I mean, I said this before when, when once you saw WWE starting to Im- improve their their interest levels, that it was going to be more difficult for AEW, much more difficult for AEW. Um, and um, you know, I mean, they they have to be much better than WWE. Um, and I don't know, you know, I mean, it's they're they're not going away or anything like that. Hopefully not. Anyway, I mean, the worst thing, you know, I don't, but I, I don't see, you know, their 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 numbers are still really good, uh, but but um, you know, are they? They're not at their peak level. I mean, that's just the reality. They're not at their peak level. Can they get back there? You know, I mean, losing Punk hurts. Don't don't kid yourself. Hey, if you're a big fan of Wrestling Observer Radio, we got twelve thousand episodes of all of our podcasts up at our website, WrestlingObserver.com. If you sign up today, you get access to every single one of them. The 12 to 18 new shows that we do every single week. You can podcast them, listen to them on the road, at work, working out, in the shower, wherever you listen to your podcasts. And also full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter and archives. So if you love what you hear, head to WrestlingObserver.com. 12,000 audio shows at your fingertips.